People are often very surprised at the cost of a professionally built tiny home compared to the pricing that they're seeing of a DIY tiny house build online. So I'm gonna share the costs that I as a builder incur to shed light on the cost of a tiny home. I started as a DIYer. My wife and I, we wanted a home that we could create and, and raise our family in. So um, Acorn started with Domek. That was a home that my wife and I built together so that we could raise our son in. And from there, uh, we just received a lot of encouragement, a lot of excitement about that home. So we decided to create a full business and offer 100% custom tiny home designs. So I'm gonna share some of the costs that I as a builder incur in order to create custom tiny homes. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. We'll tell you more about them at the end, plus what you need to get a great discount on their VPN service. So the single most common question that we get from people is, what's a tiny house gonna cost me? Um, for us, because we're a custom builder, I do always have to say that it really varies. Price will depend based off of the size, finishes, features, et cetera, of your home. We do actually have a price estimator built right into our website, and it helps give you a rough guesstimate. But long story short, really you're looking at about anywhere from as low as about 90,000 for a smaller, like 16 to 20 foot, to upwards of 200, 250,000 for something that's in the 40 foot length. And that's all in Canadian dollars. One of the biggest costs that's not really included in the cost of a self-built tiny home is labor. As professional builders, we have to pay our staff. We have about six people on our shop floor team. So we've got two cabinet makers, two finished carpenters, and two rough carpenters. We also have a dedicated designer. We have a dedicated social media coordinator. And then there's, there's management to make everything happen. There's a lot of people that go into to making something like this. The typical labor cost on a tiny house, depending on size, can range anywhere from thirty to seventy thousand dollars in labor alone. Building it yourself, you're not really factoring your time. You know the late nights, the long weekends. So, one hundred percent, if you are a capable person, I encourage you to build your own house. There's nothing more rewarding than building something with your own hands, especially if it's the house that you're going to be living in but not everyone has that skill level, nor does everyone have the time to do something like that. So that's why we as professional builders exist. And another expense that we incur as a professional builder is an indoor build facility. Uh, that is something that costs a ridiculous amount of money. We pay over $10,000 a month, for example, in order to have an indoor space. Now, um, for a lot of people, that seems crazy. When you're looking at a tiny house, there's a lot of special requirements that you have there. So you need the ceiling height, you need the door width, not a lot of properties that are gonna have that. Plus we need the additional floor space so that we can build the house, build cabinetry, you do everything else that we need to do. When you work in a non-temperature controlled environment, outside, in a yard, materials get destroyed, especially if you're working with lumber. So. Having a climate controlled environment ensures that we can build every day of the week and ensures that our staff are not getting rained on. And then it's just material storage. So materials are another huge cost when it comes to building a tiny house. The price of materials are through the roof. In the last two years, we have seen upwards of a 100% increase in a number of our products. So again, for a lot of people that are seeing low prices, they're looking at homes that are built years ago and those costs are no longer relevant anymore because stuff is just not sold for that price. It's an unfortunate situation that we live in, but costs have just gone up. And this is where a big difference is with DIY builds. Self-builders will be able to save on their costs using used and reclaimed material. I think that's great. I love the idea of doing that. Unfortunately, our certifications do not allow for that, so that's out. But you as a DIYer can absolutely do that. Our cost for a trailer 
varies anywhere from $12,000 to $20,000. The reason that trailers cost so much is because they are purpose-built for a tiny home. And I see this way too much amongst the self-builders is I just bought an old RV trailer. Why can't I put a tiny house on top of it? It was cheap, I bought it for $500 because it does not have the structural capacity to support the load that you are trying to build on top of it. Those trailers are lightweight frames. Yes, they're cheap, but your house will collapse over time. So I cannot recommend strongly enough do not use a trailer like that. If you want to do it yourself, please, I encourage you to take that opportunity and learn how to do it yourself. But make sure you build your house on the right foundation. It will come at a cost, but it ensures that your investment is going to be a sound investment and not going to uh, end up at the six o'clock news with tiny home collapsed on highway. And Unexpected cost is the cost of certifying your home. So it's important to be certified because it ensures that your home is safe and built to a recognized standard. In Canada, that's CSA certification. In the US, it might be uh, RVIA, NFPA, UL, any number of other certifications. It costs us tens of thousands of dollars for our builds and our facility to be certified. Now, this is an extreme cost. I myself as a builder don't think that the costs are justified, but we have to pay them still the same. And we're seeing more and more municipalities will not allow homes like this uh, in their jurisdictions unless they have some sort of certification saying that it has been built to these standards. And insurance is getting better for tiny homes, but it has to be certified. If it's not certified, there are fire risks, electrical hazards, flooding issues that they're worried about. I think the single most shock factor for a lot of people when it comes to price is why does custom cost more? But there's a wild difference between a custom build and a model build. The main being they're one-offs. So, you know, when we build it, we're building it once. We're also creating custom designs. So those are plans that did not exist. So we're spending 30, 40, 50, 100 hours with our clients trying to figure out what is their perfect design. And then there's all of the material sourcing that we have to go to. When it's a model, you are using this toilet, this shower, this sink, 100 times over. Same thing with the entire house. You're building 10 of them, 100 of them, you just batch everything out. So there's those efficiencies of scale. You don't have that when you're going custom. So the costs of custom mean that you are getting a house that is perfectly designed for you, but with the added expense of building around you. One of the big hidden costs of building something like a tiny home is the tools. In order to build a tiny house, we need tens of thousands of dollars in specialized tools. Whether it's plumbing equipment, electrical equipment, welding equipment, uh, metalworking equipment, woodworking equipment, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. So the dirty word of the tiny house movement is profit. Most of us in the tiny house movement are not doing this to get rich quick. We're doing it because we're passionate about the industry. We're passionate about what we're doing. We're passionate about what this is going to be creating from a lifestyle perspective for our customers. But we are a business. We do have to make some money because I have to feed my family. And part of the reason we live in a tiny house ourselves is so that we don't need a huge amount of money. So our profit is not high, but our profit is what it needs to be so that this is a sustainable business. So one of the big costs that apply to any build, whether it's a tiny house or it's a regular house, you're still gonna have systems and appliances in that structure. So the costs of your appliance in a tiny house are gonna be the exact same 
as the cost in a regular house. When you go and get a kitchen and you're paying anywhere from 10 to $30,000, that's pretty much the same cost of building that kitchen in a tiny house. The only difference is the void space in between. You don't have 20, 30 feet uh, wide rooms. You just have a seven foot or a nine foot wide room. And yes, there's a lot of cost savings by getting rid of that void space. For example, when it comes to flooring or tile or things like that, but you're still gonna need a fridge. That isn't gonna change because it's a smaller house. You know, your tankless hot water heater system is still going to cost, you know, the three to $5,000. Uh, or if you go for in-floor radiant heating, with all of the equipment and labor in involved in that, it's still gonna cost $10,000 for your heating system. The prices are ridiculous. And we as a builder fully understand that, but it, it, it's what the cost is. And as much as we want to build affordable, our affordable is based off of what the industry and the manufacturers have set our costs at. I, I've worked for other builders and really good relationship with a number of the other tiny house builders in Canada. And you know, we, we talk numbers. These are similar costs that we're experiencing amongst the industry. These are the unexpected cost increases that we've seen as inflation has been hitting us all. And it's unfortunate, but these are just the costs. So I really hope that this helps shed light on why you're paying so much for a tiny home. If you want to check out a couple of Darcy's tiny house builds, we'll link to those tours in the description below. We also want to thank NordVPN for sponsoring this video. NordVPN plays a super important part in our daily lives. Like a lot of people these days, we do just about everything online, and we used to worry about whether our personal information and our online accounts were safe. But we've been using NordVPN for over five years now, and it's honestly one of the easiest ways we've found to protect our online activity. We have the app on our phones and on our computers, and we can easily just turn on the virtual private network when we want a secure internet connection, like when we're doing online banking and stuff like that. When it's on, it does a lot of different things, including encrypting our internet data, masking our IP address, and blocking malware. So if you want a cheap and easy way to protect your online activity, you can get a two-year plan at a huge discount, plus four additional months for free when you go to nordvpn.com slash exploring alternatives. And they also have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk in giving it a try. So to get this deal, our link is nordvpn.com slash exploring alternatives, and we'll also put a link in the description below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.